Houdini 21 is releasing soon, and since there's a lot of new things that are coming to Copernicus, let's take an introductory look at OpenCL, since that's the backbone of what most of the nodes and cops are actually using. So I'll make this project file available on Patreon. If you want to grab it, you can do so on there. But let's drop down a cop net here, and then we're going to drop down an OpenCL node. And we're going to be specifically looking at the Copernicus OpenCL node. There is one outside of Copernicus, and some of the like type conventions will be the same, but most of this is going to uh, just be you know focused around Copernicus. So keep that in mind that some of this is not going to translate to your uh, outside of, of Copernicus. So let's pop this out here, and we have a few things to start. So we have this bind and then layer, and then this source or SRC, and then a question mark, and then value equals zero. So what does this all mean? So bind means we are binding, in this case, a layer. That's what this is specifying. And then we are calling that source. We can call this whatever we want. And then we have this question mark, which means that it is optional, and the default value is going to be zero. So if we come over to our signature over here, this is where we're going to also specify this. We need to set up both of these. This is what tells the node whether it's going to be an input or an, out, an output. So we can change this to be whatever we want. So let's just go ahead, we'll change our, well, actually we'll come back to that. We'll change this here in a second. But we can see that we have this question mark. Like I said, this means that it is going to be optional. So if I don't have this checked, you're going to get an error because it is going to no longer think that it is an optional layer. So we need to have both of these. Likewise, if I get rid of this question mark here, same thing. We're going to not have anything being brought into that. So it's going to think that it is uh, not existing, even though that it is set to optional in here. We need to have it set for both. And the default value, like we said, is going to be zero. You can see that being written out. If I want this to be different value, I can set that as well. We'll just leave that at zero for now. And then we have this bind layer, and then we have a um, exclamation point, which means that it is a required layer, and then, or it is required, I mean, and then the ampersand means that it is writable. And then the, again, this is just the name. So we can see here we have this. DST, which is our output. We can set this to be whatever we want. And likewise, we can set this input to be whatever we want as well. And by default, this is just going to pass through our source layer to our output. That's what this kernel is doing. So the kernel is going to be where basically all of the heavy lifting is done and where all of your code, most of your code, is going to be going here. So to actually write to the, the layer, we need to do at and then we can reference our layer name with the the or the name after that. So at DST is going to reference that output layer. And then we need to do dot set. And then inside of our parentheses is going to be our value that we want to set it to. So we can change this. Let's just change this for now just to show you that we can. We'll call this output. Call this output as well. You can see just changing that there is going to give us an issue. So we need to come in here and we need to make sure that that matches as well. And now you can see that we get everything going back as, as the way that it was. So in VEX, we have the ability to create parameters. In OpenCL, we can also do this. So in VEX, we would just do like a CHF and then we would name it whatever we want. And then we can click this little button right here, which we also have in OpenCL and it would create that parameter for us. So we can do this doing it in OpenCL through a bind, and we're going to call this parm. That's going to let it know that it wants to be a parameter, and then we can name it whatever we want. So let's call this menu, and let's set a default value for this equal to zero. Control and Enter is going to run that. I can click this little button right here and it's going to create a value for us. So I don't actually want this to be a float, so let's change this. We'll do int. Let's come back in here, and let's come into our, our bindings. So by default, it's going to, once you click this button, 
it's going to create this in the bindings as well. So I can come in here, I can set this to be an integer, and I can come in here and edit this parameter interface, and I can change this to be a integer. And then I could just copy this parameter back over and paste our relative references in case that you, you know, mess anything up. Uh, what did I do there? So we need to set this to like 10 or something. There we go. And now we have our same thing set up. So let's just come back in here. I'm going to delete that back out. I'm going to show you that you can do that. You don't have to have it automatically do it, but you can. So let's clear those back out and let's recreate those. So just click that button and it's going to automatically do that for you. And it's going to set everything up the way that it needs to once you click that button. We could do the same thing if we wanted to create something else. So let's do bind parm. Let's do a float this time. Let's call it just example float and let's set the default value to something else. We'll do like 0.5. Let's do 0.5. Click apply. We'll go ahead and click that button and you can see that we get this for us right away. So let's come to our output and we can just output, um, let's do that example. So at example, you can click apply now and you can see that we get this being output. So let's do something a little bit more with this. So let's come in here and let's come and use a, or create a float. So float, we'll call this value. And we're still going to end our code, our lines of code with a semicolon. So we'll create that variable for us and then we can use it. So let's do a switch. So let's run some code depending on what the value of the menu is. So to add menu, and then we can do our brackets. And then we can do something or use something called a case. And this is basically like a switch if. So depending on the value that we set here after the case, which in this case, we're gonna do just zero, it's going to run some code. So we're going to use a colon here, and then we're going to put whatever code that we want. So in this case, I'm gonna do value is equal to zero. And then we're going to break that. And that just lets the kernel know that it's going to stop running after that. So we'll do case one. Make sure that we use that colon value equals to 0 0.5. Break. And then let's do case two value is equal to one. And I do need to put a semicolon here as well as here. And then let's also do break here. And then we will set our output to value. I can click apply now. Now, depending on what I have selected here, it's going to change based on that value for our menu. So you can see at a value of one, it's going to set that equal to 0.5, zero, it'll set it back to zero, and then one for the second. Now we can also do some cool things with this as well. If we want to make this a little bit more readable to where that we don't have just an input of zero, one, and two here, we can actually come in here and we can do a define. So define, and then we can call this whatever we want. So We'll just call this black, and then we're gonna set that equal to the value that we want that to basically replace. So we're saying that at a value of zero, we're replacing that with black. So we'll also do define, and then we'll do gray, value of one, and then let's define white as well as value of two. Then I can come in here and I can set this to black, I can set this one to gray, and I can set this one to white. Click apply now, and you can see that it's still going to work appropriately. And then we can just make that match if we wanted to 
the parameter interface for our menu. So I could come into our menu options here, so click Use Menu for our first input. Do um, black. And here we'll do gray. And then we'll do white for the last one. Click Accept. And you can see that as I change this, it's going to change appropriately based on our selection. So that is a breakdown, a quick breakdown of how we can use OpenCL. I do want to also point out that, as I said at the start, most of the nodes inside of Copernicus are going to be using OpenCL. It runs on the GPU and makes it extremely quick. So if you want to learn more, you can dive in and learn yourself using some of the nodes that are shipped with Houdini. So you can dive into a lot of them. So if I drop down the SDF shape node, for example, if I dive inside here, we can actually look at the code for this OpenCL node. And you can see that there are quite a few different things here. We also have some headers that we can import that allow us to bring in some different things. In this case, um, they've added some things for SDFs as well as matrix. We have things for like the fractal noise. If I look at this one, you can see that they're bringing in somewhere they bring in the noise they like make the material X noise. I don't know where it, they bring it in at, um, but it is brought in import. There it is. So we have random.h. This is a random noise or a random number generator. We have this uh, noise here that they've made, as well as some material X noises, which are, are just the material X noises. Um, that you use in Karma. So there's a lot of different nodes in here that allow you to go through and you know learn some things. Uh, that's where I picked up some of this stuff. Like um, this isn't the one maybe, but the define stuff, that's something that they do in one of their nodes as well. Um, so you can go through and, and learn a lot from these. They go over a bunch of different things. So in this case, they're using some else ifs, a bunch of else ifs, and then feeding different parameters in here. They do some different code stuff. Definitely look through and, you know, start to try to learn how to do some different things because obviously these are the Houdini um, nodes that, that side effects made. So they clearly know what they're doing because they work super, super well. But I wanted to just expose you to that and get you, you know, thinking about what you could maybe use this for. There's going to be some interesting stuff that's coming with Houdini 21, I'm sure, um, with the new, the new nodes that they're bringing in. So I'm sure that there'll be even more stuff that you can dive into and take a look at and learn some more for that. So hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.